<laughs> well, everyone has a story to tell. Well, actually, that's not entirely true. Every, everyone has more than one story to tell. Well, the EMSB is launching the What's Your Story celebration with this how-to video. In this video, you're going to learn how to do several things. I'll show you how. You will hear others telling stories, their own stories. You will learn how to find your own story. You will pitch your stories to your class and teacher. You will get answers to your burning questions. Now, before we begin, take a moment to think about stories. Uh, are they fun? Do you love to listen to your teacher read stories? Do your family members share personal stories from their childhood? Do you enjoy listening to stories shared on the bus or even on the radio? Storytelling can be a superpower. Stories shape our world. They're, they are the history we inherit, the wisdom we share, and the, and the joy we spread. Now, you're going to have three minutes uh, to tell a personal story, something that means something to you and uh, has a message to share, whether it's funny, courageous, sad, or silly. Uh, now, here are a couple of stories as example from, from Julie and Kara. Have you ever been up close to a whale? Like, really close to a whale? Like so close, you can see the white in their eyeballs, which I didn't even know they had before this story happened. Well, I have, and let me tell you, it is a whale of a tale. So, we were on a road trip in Nova Scotia, and my mom decides to take us whale watching. We, we have to drive halfway across Digby, which is where we're staying. And to get there, it takes super long. So once we get there, we're hungry. So we, we, we have to wait for this ferry, and we just go into the cafe next to it, and I have some chowder. Once we get across, we take the ferry, then we take the other ferry, then we walk for a bit. We get there, and they're like, okay, put it on all these clothes. And it's like 10 degrees outside, so we need like maybe a sweater. But they're like, have three hats, four sweaters, and a coat. <laughs> so we're sitting there sweating, and then all the other people arrive, and we get on the Zodiac, which is like basically just a rubber tube around a metal bottom. And we start heading out of the harbor, and it starts getting bumpier and bumpier, and foggier and foggier, and I'm feeling a bit sick. And then, we get far enough out that they're like, stop, there is a whale sighted nearby, so we're gonna stop the boat and just wait. And there's like, moms being like, oh, we're gonna see a whale, and then there's this kid crying, and everyone's just so excited. And then, everyone's just like, whoa, and I'm like, what? And just as I say what, I realize in my head, you are going to barf. You're going to barf right now, and you are not going to see that whale. And then I barf off the side of the boat. And I'm like barfing, but I'm half listening to what the dude's saying. And he's saying that whales bro blow rings in a circle. Humpback whales blow rings in a circle so that it ro rises in a column to trap the fish inside. And then they just go up and like. So I'm barfing. And just when I think I can't barf anymore, I notice there's a ring of bubbles right around where I've been barfing. And I'm like, oh no, oh no. <laughs> and then from the depths of the ocean rises a giant whale and swallows not only a bunch of fish, but my barf. And as I'm sitting in the Zodiac, as we're going back, I think, I thought that chowder tasted fishy. So my story is a story that you should not do. Do not do this at home, folks. It starts when I was about 14 years old and I lived in Scotland and I went to high school and one day myself and my friend Angus decided to skip school 
and instead of going to school, we were going to meet at the train station and get the train to Glasgow and go and do some Christmas shopping. I guess it must have been around about November. It was a, a kind of a cold, damp day, and we arrived in Glasgow all excited to be skipping school and went to the pancake place and had a big stack of pancakes for breakfast covered with uh, fake maple syrup because they don't have real maple syrup in Scotland, just in Canada. And, um, and then we did our shopping. We went to the Virgin Records store. We bought music. We had a great time wandering around the streets. And all the time we were kind of aware that we needed to get back to the station to be able to get back to our town and back home for the time of the school buses around. Driving. So we make our way back to the station later on in the day and as I'm coming into the train station I realise that there's so many people everywhere. The place is absolutely chaotic. It's packed and there's barriers up and I don't know what's going on and I have to get from the main doors of Glasgow Central Station all the way over to Platform 11 to get the train to Kilmarnock and I can't get there and I'm pushing myself through people. Angus is behind me, pushing, pushing, pushing and all of a sudden I get to a fence and I, I stop at the fence and I look up and I'm looking into the eyes of Prince Charles and I look at him and I know who he is and the first thing that comes to my mind to say is oh, you don't look like that on the TV and he said oh, thank you very much and then I managed to push my way down and get onto the train and then I guess and I sat in the train all the way home going <gasps> talk to Prince Charles and you talk to Prince Charles. Oh, wow, that's amazing. Okay, so we get home, split up. I go home to my house. It must have been a Tuesday because my gran and grandpa were there. They came every Tuesday with a pot of soup and a pot of fluffy jello, which is like jello made with condensed milk. It's horrible, but they thought I loved it. So they brought it every week for me. So they were sitting in the, in the living room. My mum was in the kitchen. Um, I walked in. Somebody said, you have a good day at school? And I said, yeah, great. It was a good day. I didn't say it was at school. And then we started our evening, preparations for dinner, etc., etc. And the television was on. And on comes Reporting Scotland, kind of like the evening news show. And there on the television for a split second, there's Prince Charles in some kind of um, foundry making, um, making metal or something and then it cuts to the train station and there he is and guess who he's talking to on the television? Me! And I see myself and I see Prince Charles and I look over at my gran and grandpa and I dash through to the kitchen just to make sure my mother doesn't walk through from the kitchen and see the TV because if I get caught I am not, not good could be in serious trouble and so I can zip through to the kitchen and then as I'm standing in the kitchen I hear my grandfather's voice loud and clear from the, the living room. He says, Anne, to my mother, you'll never guess. I think, oh my gosh, what's he going to do? He's going to dub me in. He goes, Anne, you'll never guess. There was a kid on TV there that was this spitting image of our Julie. But I guess it couldn't have been her because she was at school. And I said, yeah, and walked back through and watched my grandpa as he watched me walk towards him. He had a big smile on his face. I had a nervous smile on my face. And we never spoke of it again. <sighs> now it's your turn to discuss the videos and, and say what you felt was good about the stories. Go ahead. Now, once you've talked with your peers in pairs or small groups, share your ideas. Can you come up with the top five list of must-dos for storytelling? And I write these on the board. <laughs> 